Take a look at these two OLED TVs. Can you tell which one is the LG G1 with OLED Evo technology which is supposed to deliver higher peak brightness? Find out the answer at some point in this in-depth review. Hello everyone, Vincent Theo from HDTV Test here. This is the 65-inch version of the LG G1, which is the only OLED range in the company's 2021 TV lineup to feature an upgraded, more efficient OLED panel that's optimized to deliver higher peak brightness without increasing the risk of OLED burn-in. Delving into the service menu, we can see that the chipset on the LG G1 is codenamed O20N, suggesting that the base architecture is probably quite similar to the O20 chipset implemented on last year's CX and GX. Indeed, when we used the excellent Meridio 7G signal generator to read the edit of the G1, we found that the HDMI 2.1 bandwidth remained the same at 40 gigabits per second, and there's still no DTS codec support, which means you can't pass through DTSX lossless audio over eARC. When it came to the subpixel structure of the 65-inch OLED panel used, there's no difference from last year's panels which were characterized by a Z-shaped green subpixel. Using a Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer to capture the spectral power distribution, or SPD, of the LG G1, we can see some distinct changes from 65-inch 2020 OLED panels. The blue half-width has become narrower, with a clearer separation between the green and red peaks. Does this change in spectral power distribution have any effect on the color gamut? Enough all on our review sample, to be honest. DCI-P3 coverage measured 95% UV, whereas RAC 2020 was 72%, figures which haven't advanced from previous years. Due to OLED's self-emissive properties, all OLED TVs are capable of true blacks, so what separates one OLED television from another is near-black handling, how the OLED deals with the first steps coming out of black. LG's progress in this area has stagnated, the South Korean manufacturer is still mainly relying on a dithering technique, first introduced on 2018 models such as the C8 and E8, to mask near-black chrominance overshoot in heavily compressed dark scenes. While flashing artifacts were undoubtedly suppressed to an acceptable degree, certain dark tones could appear very noisy, and occasionally there would be breakthrough flashes whenever the luminance rise accelerated past the dithering threshold, doing no favors to this bit starved Game of Thrones broadcast which, to be fair, will look grubby even on the best OLED TVs. Dark uniformity on our review unit was improved overall, exhibiting no darker blob on the top left corner seen on the majority of 65-inch OLED panels last year. Thin vertical streaks and side vignetting remain present on a full-field 5% video stimulus gray slide, but they rarely showed up in real-world viewing, even in challenging scenes from The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. SDR color accuracy was excellent after calibration, with average delta error measuring below 1 on this challenging 140 patch color checker SG chart, and only one hue slightly exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. As a result, general colors including skin tones looked natural and accurate in SDR movies, faithfully reproducing the creative intent. Before moving on to talk about motion, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crypto More for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about buying a new TV, even if it's not the LG G1, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 6607 mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Okay. For its 2021 OLEDs including the G1 series, LG has particularly focused on improving 24p motion smoothness because the company realizes that many new OLED TV owners are perturbed by more obvious 24p stutter owing to OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time, compared to LED LCDs whose inherent blur actually masks the 24p stutter to a certain degree. The fruit of LG's labor is the new cinematic movement setting in the True Motion submenu which aims to smooth out the mild stutter inherent in 24 frames per second movies without introducing significant soap opera effect or SOE. And I think LG engineers have struck a very nice balance here. 
making cinematic movement the most effective 24p smoothing solution on the market at the time I filmed this video in March 2021, at least until I get the chance to check out rival implementations from other TV brands. Of course, being a purist, I can still see mouse opera effect, especially in fast moving scenes, but I'm confident owners who cannot tolerate 24p stutter on OLED will appreciate cinematic movement which introduces even less SOE and interpolation artifacts than last year's cinema clear setting. With true motion disabled, motion resolution came in at the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines on this horizontally scrolling test pattern. Engaging true motion would more than double motion resolution to 650 lines, and should you go into the user selection submenu and enable OLED Motion Pro which activates 120Hz black frame insertion, Motion resolution could go up to 1080 lines or perhaps even higher together with the blur set to 10. New for 2021, LG has implemented a compensatory low luminance LUT with OLED Motion Pro engaged to reverse the shadow detail loss previously seen on the manufacturer's 2020 OLED TVs, such as the CX or C10. In practice, there's still some slight darkening, but not to the extent of crushing shadow detail which is an improvement over 2020 models. We discovered that if a picture board had been calibrated using Kalman AutoCal, then the OLED Motion Pro compensatory LUT wouldn't be applied, leading to crushed shadow detail. But because LG's 2021 OLED TVs aren't officially supported by Kalman until the next major release, we will just chalk it down to unsupported software and avoid using AutoCal together with 120Hz black frame insertion for now. The highest OLED Motion Pro intensity of high would cause visible flicker in bright scenes, so it is not a setting that we would use. Just like on last year's models, engaging OLED Motion Pro for HDR content would result in at least a 200 nit drop in peak brightness and overall darker tone mapping, so it is not something we would even contemplate when playing HDR games or watching HDR sports. Note that engaging true motion, even user selection with both the judder and the blur set to zero, would introduce some stuttering artifacts in various 50Hz broadcast programs we get in the UK and other PAL regions. This is an area where LG still has some catching up to do. With overscan disabled for standard definition content, upscaling was very good, retrieving sharp detail from this SMPTE RP133 test card in 576i, with slight ringing and fizziness, in case you are still watching plenty of interlaced broadcast material in this day and age. The LG G1's performance in this department was excellent. The television correctly detected and processed both 3.2 and 2.2 cadences in film-based material, while jaggies in video-based content were suppressed effectively. The G1 also passed full chroma bandwidth from this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Munsell HD benchmark disk in all picture modes. Cycling through full field gray slides to assess bright uniformity, we didn't spot any dirty screen effect or bending on our review sample. However, we observed a noticeable pink tint and brightness drop even from just 30 degrees off center, which was different from previous WRGB OLEDs. So even if you are sitting directly in front of the TV, the sights may appear pinkish depending on your viewing distance. We will wait to check out other 2021 OLEDs before jumping to the conclusion that this off-axis pink tint is caused by the EVO panel used. Also, while running this luminance loading test pattern from the Spears & Munsell UHD HDR benchmark disk, we saw some faint horizontal lines especially when the expanding window was small and bright. Thankfully, this Venetian blind effect was virtually invisible in real-world content on our review unit from a normal viewing distance, even in bright HDR scenes. Talking of which, after running in our LG G1 review sample for at least 100 hours, peak brightness measured 790 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 160 nits full fill, prompting me to mutter to myself, is that it? That's what she's but when I looked back at the peak brightness figures I measured on the 65 inch LG GX last year, for HDR, peak brightness measured 650 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 130 nits full fill. LG really isn't lying about the 20% brightness increase. 
because a 20% increase on 650 and 130 nits brings us to 780 and 156 nits respectively, which are very close to the numbers I got from this LG G1 here. Of course, some of you will rightly point out that some 2018 and 2019 LG OLEDs, such as the C8 and C9, could already hit 750 to 800 nits on a 10% window and 150 nits full fill. So isn't the LG G1 just back to square one? Not quite, because you have to understand that the G1 can reach this sort of peak luminance figures without needing as much electrical current to light up the OLED material, therefore not only prolonging the lifespan of the television, but also reducing the risk of permanent screen burn. Here's the thing, unfortunately safety features just don't make for attractive selling points. Seat belts can save your life, but don't get you late. Understanding the relationship between luminance, current, and lifetime on an OLED TV is also the reason why I chuckle to myself when certain quarters claim that they've found a secret technique to unlock even higher peak brightness on 2021 OLED TVs. I myself know how to achieve 200 nits full screen at D65 white point on the LG G1, but I am not so foolish or irresponsible as to start showing everyone how to do it because I am fully aware that the ABL circuitry, logo dimming algorithm, and compensation cycles have all been optimized based on 800 nits peak and 160 nits full fill. And trying to circumvent these protective mechanisms will just shorten the lifespan of the display and increase the risk of burning, however slightly. With all this said, does the LG G1 look brighter than 2020 OLEDs such as the CX or GX? For the most part, the difference is not night and day, and there are several reasons for this. 1. Our eyes perceive light in a logarithmic manner, so a 20% increase in measured peak luminance doesn't automatically translate to a 20% increase in perceived brightness. 2. Most HDR movies, especially those with top and bottom letterbox bars, are not graded to a level that can consistently showcase the more relaxed ABL on the G1. And 3. Because the HDR10 PQ standard is absolute, a 300 nit object should always be displayed as 300 nits by an accurate television, even if its native peak brightness is higher, something I've explained when I reviewed the 900 nit Panasonic GZ2000 OLED 18 months ago and talked about why not all scenes will look brighter than the 700 nit Panasonic GZ950. Despite this higher peak brightness, not every scene will look brighter than, let's say, the GZ950. Nevertheless, there were more than a handful of scenes where the extra headroom afforded by the higher peak brightness on the LG G1 was visible and beneficial. Bright specular highlights had a touch more pop. For example, the overhead fluorescent lights in this shot from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. White background could go slightly brighter thanks to a more relaxed ABL or automatic brightness limiter, such as in this scene from The Matrix. And because less tone mapping was needed, the LG G1 was able to preserve both brightness and detail a bit better than last year's GX, contributing to more impactful HDR than previous generations of OLED TVs. Of course, full fill brightness was still some way of the best LED LCDs which deliver more wow in terms of outright HDR impact. But OLED's pixel level light control meant that the picture would be free from luminance fluctuations and blooming artifacts, while OLED's true blacks made highlights pop more against a backdrop of insanely high contrast. This year, LG has renamed its dynamic tone mapping to HDR tone mapping which worked well to retain more highlight detail in HDR scenes containing very bright objects. However, because LG's dynamic tone mapping algorithm still affected the overall brightness in most scenes too much, thus deviating from the original creative intent, we prefer leaving the setting off in the interest of image accuracy. Like on previous LG OLEDs, native 10-bit gradation on the G1 wasn't as smooth as that seen on Sony and Panasonic OLEDs, but at least this year the smooth gradation decontouring filter worked better than last year's models, suppressing the posterization in the skies of the Martian effectively, even on the least aggressive setting of low. As always, don't go overboard with this smooth gradation setting, since it can erase more fine detail, contributing to a beauty filter effect. Out of the box in the most accurate cinema picture preset, Shadow detail in both HDR10 and Dolby Vision content look darker than reference, 
But after calibration, the G1 presented this fade in from black sequence from the Revenant in a smoother and clearer manner than we've seen on any LG OLED to date. We checked the end credits of Mindhunter in Dolby Vision on Netflix and confirmed that blacks were not elevated both before and after calibration. With game optimizer mode engaged, input lag measured 12.5 milliseconds with a 60 frames per second video signal going down to a crazy fast 4.8 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. New for 2021, LG has also added a boost mode for 60p games, which can reduce input lag to under 10 milliseconds by simulating receiving a 120 frames per second signal, as long as overscan is disabled. Unlike other OLED brands, LG offers 4 HDMI 2.1 ports on their high-end OLEDs including the G1, which should prove useful to those of you who own multiple HDMI 2.1 gaming devices. ALLM, HDMI Forum VRR, G-Sync, FreeSync, and HGIG are all supported and working out of the box. And even though we measured an almost 108 peak brightness deficit in HDR game mode versus HDR filmmaker mode on our review sample, LG has said that this is a bug and sent across a beta firmware that rectified the issue reassuring us that the fix will be rolled out shortly or maybe even pre-installed at shipping. VR gamma shift and flickering remain present on the LG G1, since it was too late to implement a hardware fix before the launch of 2021 OLEDs, but at least the South Korean manufacturer has provided a fine-tuned dark areas setting in the game optimizer menu to help owners mitigate the overbrightened near-black gamma, and to a lesser extent the VR flicker, on a game-by-game -game basis. Like last year's GX, the LG G1 Gallery series is designed to be wall-mounted. It ships with a flush-fit wall-mount bracket in the box, and the chassis features a uniform thickness of only 2cm from top to bottom. For those of you who can't wall-mount the G1, LG also sells a pair of optional feet to be fitted near both ends of the screen, although if you don't put a soundbar in front of the television, there'll be a bigger gap than Arsenal's defense through which you may see dangling wires behind the television. You can route cables through the feet for a tidier appearance, but there's only enough space to accommodate at most two cables per foot, even if your cable is as manageable as this certified ultra-high-speed HDMI 2.1 cable from British manufacturer through HQ. LG has updated both the Magic Remote and the WebOS interface on its 2021 televisions. The remote is more streamlined than before, with a groove at the back to better fit your hand. It's a weird shape, but I like it. There are four hotkeys to various content providers at the bottom of the remote, most notably one for Disney+, Plus, which was sorely missing on previous Magic Remotes. The WebOS 6.0 UI takes up the whole screen, and unfortunately is not very customizable, so you get three tiles of weather, tips, and search occupying the top third of the screen, which seems a waste of prime real estate with no way of swapping the tiles for something more useful that's tailored to the owner. Like on previous webOS platforms, the app list is comprehensive, and you can change the order of the apps. Below that, you get horizontal rows of content from tuner programs and various streaming services, reminiscent of Android TV shelves. But unlike on Android TV, there's currently no way to move or delete individual rows, so you are stuck with rows of Rakuten TV and Apple TV regardless of whether you watch them or not. To sum up, the LG G1 is an evolutionary rather than revolutionary advancement from the company's previous OLEDs, which is just as well that it's marketed as OLED EVO, not OLED REVO. The advertised 20% increase in brightness is materialized according to our measurements, bringing more HDR impact in scenes containing bright specular highlights or a bright background. In terms of picture processing, the LG G1 OLED EVO delivers three key upgrades over last year's CX or GX, namely a new cinematic movement setting to smooth out the inherent stutter in 24p films without introducing as much so opera effect and interpolation artifacts as previous implementations, a more effective smooth gradation decontouring filter, and better preservation of shadow detail with 120Hz BFI engaged, as long as you don't use AutoCal. Although near-black handling and 50Hz true motion interpolation are not problem-free, I expect the LG G1 to maintain better gaming credentials than any other OLED brand, thanks to class-leading input lag, 4 HDMI 2.1 ports, 
as well as ALLM, VR, and HGIG, which are all functional out of the box, and with a lower starting price than last year's GX series at launch, the LG G1 deservedly earns our highly recommended award. To watch more of our technical OLED TV reviews, here's our playlist, and for more of our OLED TV comparisons, click here for another playlist, and I will see you in the next video.